Hi, my name's Joe. Today we're going to get into how to do some advanced things with the envelope follower in the Akai Force. First, let's take a listen to some of the patches that we're going to be making. Well, I hope those patches have you intrigued. Before we get into the patches, let's quickly review what an envelope follower is and isn't so that we're on the same page. So here we've got a waveform that I recorded into a sample. Can you tell what this sounds like from looking at this waveform? I know I definitely can't. But let's just assume that maybe this was like an organ sound. And I just held down a note, and while I was recording it, I just rode the volume knob. I turned it up and down. Would you be able to look at this waveform and tell from the signal just looking at it what I was doing with the volume knob while I recorded it? I bet you could. So now you know exactly what an envelope follower does. This is what it's trying to do. I just want you to keep in mind that it can't really detect pitch. It can't really tell anything about the timbre of the sound. It really doesn't care if this was an organ or a piano or a vocal or a drum or a synthesizer or even some white noise. It doesn't care. All it can really do is detect the volume envelope of this signal, and it's going to try to trace this waveform along the top. But we'll start with the ducking reverb. It's the simplest of these patches and can be made with only one track. So I've got this preset loaded up in electric. I really like the sound of this, and all I've done to this patch to modify it is I turned off the internal delay and the internal reverb. And I've come over here to the effects, and I've added this reverb onto the mixer, and I've turned it up to like 11 here. I've got the time set at 36 seconds and the mix set at 50%. So it's huge. Uh, the other thing I've done is just set this up to be like a corded ARP on the notes.
And I think the decay on this reverb, the tail of it, sounds great. But the problem, as you're probably hearing, is that as I play the individual notes, they really get lost in this big muddy reverb tail. So we're going to use an envelope follower to help us out, to duck this big reverb tail out of the way while these notes are playing, and then bring it back up once we stop playing. Let's set that up. If you've never been into the envelope followers, all you have to do is hold down your edit key and hit knobs and come over here to the envelope follower tab. The first thing we need to do is tell this thing what to listen to. And you can see here, I'd already had this set up to listen to plugin one. That's where I have um, the instance of electric. So we're basically telling it to listen to the output of electric. So if I play some notes now, you'll be able to see the response to it. There's a little bit of a problem though. You can see that it's still listening while the reverb tail is happening. And we actually want to have this take the dry input of that piano sound rather than the one affected by the reverb. So let's switch this over to pre-inserts and see how that changes things. Now you can hear my reverb tail is still going, but the signal is completely gone from the envelope follower. And that's exactly what we want. Next, we need to tell this what to do with this envelope follower. So I'm gonna click the learn button here and we'll come over to the mixer and into this reverb. I'll click on the mix control and just move this knob and it will have learned that parameter. If we come back to the envelope follower now, we've got this set up to control the reverb mix along with the envelope follower. So let's give that a listen. So that's working, you can hear it controlling that, but it's actually going the wrong direction. So the first thing let's do, let's flip these controls here. Now we're gonna go from 100% when the signal is hot to 0% when the signal is dry, assuming a full signal. Sounds good, so let's dial this in a little bit more. I don't want this to ever go to 100%. Let's bring this down to maybe about 50 is where I want it to max out. So you can see up here, this is bringing it down when I'm playing the notes and bringing it back up when I stop, but it's not bringing it down far enough. So the first thing we might wanna do is change the gain on this signal. Let's bring this up quite a bit. And maybe even a little bit more. Another thing that we can do is switch this control input from linear, and I'm gonna to go to logarithmic. So um, linear is like a straight line. Logarithmic um, slows down the signal at the beginning and uh, kind of makes it go faster at the end, and then exponential makes the envelope curve faster at the beginning and uh, slower towards you get to the end. It's really not scientific trying to figure out which of these to choose. Just kind of use your ears and figure out which one sounds good to you. So we're getting closer. You can see that the reverb is going way down, ducking way down while I'm playing. And that sounds really good. Um, that's just about exactly what I want. The only thing is that it's bringing it back up a little bit quickly. It's sounding kind of artificial. So if I move over to here, you can see we've also got an attack and decay control for this. And let's bring the decay up a little bit so that this responds a little bit slower when I stop playing those notes. Next, let's check out the custom alternating modulation sources. All right, let's get a little more advanced with this. So here we've got tube synth, and I've got this preset called Hands in the Air, which I think is pretty cool. And what I'd like to do is add some custom modulations to this cutoff. So over here in my sampler, you can see I've recorded a couple of rhythm patterns. 
And I just made these using a drum kit. I just sampled them. Um, the first one sounds like this. And the second one sounds like this. So they're just a little bit different. And what I'd like to do is apply those to the filter and then alternate them every time that I press uh, a note. So let's look into that. So in order to achieve this, I'm going to need to add a new track. Um, I've got a uh, just a drum kit here and a bass plug-in, but let me add one to track four. And I'm going to add a key group track. And this key group track is going to hold those samples. So let's come in and edit the properties of this key group. And on layer one, I'm just going to put that first rhythm track. So the next thing I need to do is come over to the global tab. And let's turn key track off. That way this thing won't change pitch every time I press note. And because envelope followers are monophonic, I'm also going to turn the, actually for this key group polyphony, I'm going to turn this down to mono. And we'll just do the same here. And now my key group sounds like this. Doesn't really matter which key I press, it's always triggering just that exact same um, drum loop. Next, let's set up our envelope follower. I'll come over here and choose my source, and I'm going to pick a track. And I'm going to pick this key group. And key group 01. So let's test that out. Perfect. Now let's learn the target. I'll click on learn here. And I'll come back over to tube synth. And we'll just move this filter cut off. And it looks like we've successfully learned that. So let's see how that's working. So the reason I'm not getting any sound is because I've got the parameter range set from zero to 100%. So if there's no signal on the envelope follower, then my filter cutoff is gonna be all the way down at zero. So it's gonna be cutting off all of the frequencies. And when I play a note on tube synth here, I'm actually not triggering that drum pattern. So we need to set up that routing as well. If I come back here to the matrix and I come to plug in one, which is tube synth, and I go down to MIDI routing, I can do a MIDI send to this key group one. And now when I play a note on tube synth, it's also gonna trigger that key group that has the hat pattern on it. So that's exactly what we want. I promised you we would alternate patterns every note, so let's set that up as well. I'm gonna come back to the key group properties. We'll go to layer two, and I'll add that second rhythm in here. Just like that. And if I come back over here to the global tab, we're set to layer play right now is velocity, but if I change this to cyclical, what it's gonna do is switch those layers every time I press a note. So let's watch what happens now. And I need to be on the tube synth track. Cool, huh? So the last thing is I'm actually still hearing that key group track and I may want that, but in this case I don't. So let me come back over to this track in the mixer. We've got a few different options here for what we could do with this key group track. Uh, if I come over to the routing on the IO tab, uh, one thing I could do is just send it to some used, unused output. Now I've got my force set up so that I've got 32 tracks. If you don't have that and you don't have an unused output, another option you could take a look at is just to send this to one of your unused submixes. Like I could send this to submix eight. And then if I hit the master button down here and I find that sub mix and I can just mute that. Just like that. There's a lot of possibilities with that one. I hope that this gives you a good start. Next, let's get into adding an ADSR envelope to a control that doesn't have one. 
Next up, I've got this preset loaded in hype, Lonely Lead. It sounds like this. If I come over to my mixer, I've added this lo-fi effect, and if I enable it, it sounds more like this. Which is really cool, but um, it's kind of obnoxious to have it like that all the time. So what I'd actually like to do is to add an envelope to this mix control so that when I start playing the note, I really don't hear much of this effect at all, but the longer I hold the note, the more this mix increases so that it gets more erratic and unstable. So let's set that all up. The first thing we're gonna need is to have a sample of something that we can control with an envelope. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna load a plugin synth here. And for now, let's set this to tube synth. We'll pick the init patch here. It's just a big square wave. Uh, let's come over here and turn down oscillator two. That sounds pretty good. Oscillator one is all the way up. Uh, yeah. All right, let's grab a sample of that. Record arm and perfect. That's all we need. Let's name this saw and we'll keep it. If I come into the sample editor, Let's put our knobs in screen mode. And we can zoom in on this, and you can see that this just is a saw wave. So let's set our start and end points. We're just gonna try to capture a single cycle of this saw wave. So if I bring my loop start in a bit, and bring my loop end in a lot. And the other thing I wanna do here is to Set this zero snapping on. That means that it's only gonna move these start and end points at the points where these cross this middle line. Let's zoom in a bit. And now we'll just move the start by a bit. Maybe right to the start of one of those and then we'll take the end point and we'll move this in a bit to where we just get one cycle of this. So let's turn loop on and let's hear what this sounds like. Perfect. Let's go ahead and process this, and we'll use this discard function to throw away the things uh, beyond the start and end points. So I'll click do it. And the other thing we can do here is to normalize this waveform. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you can see that I've just got the saw wave. Really loud and obnoxious, love it. All right, perfect. Um, let's rename this to All right, cool. I am finished with tube synth now, so I'll go ahead and delete that track. And instead, I'm going to add another key group track. These key group tracks are really handy with these envelope followers. Let's go ahead and edit the properties of this, and we'll assign that sample that we just created, single cycle saw. And now what we should hear is I'll be able to play this single cycle saw. Actually, let me turn this thing down a bit. It was super loud. Um, and hear it span across the keyboard. So there's a bonus tip for you how to sample a single cycle waveform. Um, let's go ahead and turn the key tracking off for this. We don't need it. Again, let's set the polyphony down to mono. Great. So now I have something that I can control the volume of it with an envelope, right? Um, so if I come in here and if I increase this amp attack, now the, that swells in, right? So that's pretty cool. I can control the decay, the sustain, the release. Perfect. So in order to make this for convenient for ourselves um, so that we can adjust this envelope while we're actually playing and looking at the parameters, let's go ahead and add these controls. So I'm gonna come back to edit knobs and I'm gonna switch over to project two knobs. So these are um, by default empty and you can use them for anything you want. 
let's go ahead. I selected the first one here. I'm going to click on the learn button and I'm going to come back here and let's learn the attack here. I'll click the next one. We'll learn the decay. I'll move to the next knob and learn the sustain. And the final one, I'll learn the release. You can also learn these curve parameters here too if you want. Uh, I'm not going to learn them all for the sake of time of this demo, but um, that's another great thing you can do with these and add all those. At this point, I'll come back, I'll turn my learn off, and now I've got at least the uh, four main parameters of my envelope mapped. Let's come over to envelope follower, and we're going to set this to, once again, follow key group one. So now if I watch this in action, And I've got complete control over this with my knobs. So let's go ahead and click the learn button. We'll come back to the mixer. I'll come into this lo-fi effect and I want to learn the mix. So I'll just move that a little bit. Come back here, learn's been disabled. And let's see what that sounds like. And again, here I'm playing the key group track. Um, so we want to come back to the matrix. Uh, we want to switch over to plug in one, which is hype. And again, let's set up that routing so that every time I play a node on hype, it gets sent to the key group. And let's come over to the mixer for our key group track. We don't want to hear that. So again, I'm going to take this one and instead of routing it to my main output, I'll just pick somewhere that's not in use. And if I look at the slow-fi effect now, that envelope is controlling the mix parameter. So it looks like it's only going up to about 20%, 26%. I'd like to take that up a little bit further. So one thing we need to do here is come in and adjust the gain. That's about perfect. And now I can control this envelope for this mix control with these knobs here. Let's turn this attack way up. It's still happening a little bit fast for me. Um, I'm gonna try to play with this attack curve. There's a lot that you can do with that technique. So let's take that a step further. Let's add a tempo sync LFO to a parameter that normally couldn't be modulated. All right, this last example works really similarly to the last one that we just did. So uh, I'm not gonna do it step by step. Um, I've got hype here. I've got this preset called richer wash. And what I wanna do is modulate this wavetable position with an LFO. So you can see here that I've already added a key group track. Um, I've set it to mono. Um, I've turned the level down a bit. Over on the samples, I used that same single cycle saw. I hope you saved that. Um, if not, it's real easy to create another one, right? But it's handy to keep a copy of something like this saved. Um, I've turned the key tracking off. Over on the mixer, I have routed this key group track to a place that I won't hear it. Looking at hype synth, uh, I've set up the routing so that it does a MIDI send to key group one so that we hear that, uh, that saw, saw wave when we are playing the hype track. And finally, we just need to set up um, our envelope follower. So let's come over here. Oh yeah, I also learned the LFO controls for that key group to project two. So if we come over to here, we're already Following the key group, it's not really doing anything at this point. We'll turn the envelope follower on. And it's just putting out kind of a square envelope. 
So let's come over and learn this wavetable position. Great, and the next thing we want to do is to come back into our keeper group settings. And let's take a look at the LFO. So here we've got it set to a sine wave. And what we want to do is bring this control up so that it affects the amplitude of this waveform coming out of it. And I've got this control right here. So if we jump back over to hype synth, Now I can adjust the waveform. I really like this uh, downward saw with this one. And we can also adjust the tempo here with the tempo sync. So let's try um, eight note triplets. And one thing to look out for on these, I don't know if I showed this on the other ones, but um, if you come back over here to the envelope follower, this is set to momentary. So if you drop, do this little drop down, um, what this is going to do when you release the key, um, it's going to jump back to its previous value. That is the wavetable position will jump back to its previous value. So for an envelope follower like this, it's better to turn the momentary off and that way it just doesn't do anything. And we can possibly set that where we want it to settle. Let's try maybe here. Nope, I don't like that either. So um, let's also set up the envelope on that key group to be um, have a little bit more release to it. So we'll come back over here, go to the envelopes, and we can just maybe bring this release time out a little bit. Let's hear what that sounds like. One final tip for these envelope followers is that even though I'm actually not adjusting this control with my hands, this control is still being adjusted. So if we want to, we can actually record this automation into here. Um, let's take a look at that. So if I come in here, and we actually don't have anything recorded for this, but I do have a little clip pattern in here. So let's hear what that sounds like if I launch that clip. And let's turn our right automation on. I'm gonna make sure that track is record armed, which it is. And let's go ahead and play that clip. So you can see we've recorded that LFO automation. If I come back over to the envelope follower, I can actually turn this off now. Um, so if I were to come back to the key group and play this live, that's gone. But when I play the clip, It's got the automation recorded into it. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I think at this point, you're kind of an envelope follower expert. You've really learned what it can do and how we can take advantage of these to really help us out in our different projects and do some things that we wouldn't be able to do without them. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.